In a world where demand for clean, secure baseload power is growing significantly, the Atango Uranium Project is one of a handful of large, long-life and low-technical risk projects with a completed definitive feasibility study. The Atango Project is located in the progressive, mining-friendly democracy of Namibia in Southern Africa, which has a long history of mining and is the world's fifth largest producer of uranium. The project is located just 47 kilometers from one of Southern Africa's largest and busiest deep water ports, Wolfish Bay, which has handled the transportation of uranium oxide for more than 35 years. Just 38 kilometers west of Itango is the thriving seaside town of Swakopmund. Home to over 45,000 people, Swakopmund offers excellent supporting infrastructure and recreational facilities. Banaman's Itango project lies within the Orongo region, the trade hub of Namibia. It offers an excellent network of interconnected infrastructure, including sealed roads, rail, power and water. The Orongo region will source most of its water from desalination plants. The first of these, at Flotskebarken, some 30 kilometres north of Swakopmund, was commissioned in 2010. A second plant, planned at mile 6, will supply additional water from 2014. Itango will require a short access road from the nearby highway, a power line branch and a water pipeline from Swakopmund. The Orongo region is host to an extraordinary concentration of large, world-class uranium deposits with two producing mines, Rio Tinto's Rossing Mine, in operation since 1976, and Paladin Energy's Lange Heinrich Mine. Itango is a global top 10 pure uranium project with a maiden ore reserve of 119 million pounds of uranium oxide and planned production of 69 million pounds uranium oxide per annum. The recently completed DFS is the culmination of six years of resource drilling, four years of metallurgical studies and three years of engineering studies. The Atango deposit outcrops its surface and as a result processing commences soon after the first production blast. The uranium is hosted within granitic intrusions known locally as alaskite. The large, shallow dipping deposit has consistent mineralization. The predominant uranium-bearing mineral, uraninite, is hosted within the Alaskite intrusions that vary in thickness from 3 meters to 135 meters. They occur over 150 meters to 1400 meters in length and dip between 20 to 40 degrees to the west. 70% of the deposit lies within 200 meters of surface. The average strip ratio of 3.3 to 1 is low compared to its peers. This is a large project and therefore will be mined in a series of stages over the long mine life. The first stage of mining will target an area of the deposit that outcrops its surface ensuring early cash flow. The conventional open pit mining operation will utilize 550 tonne hydraulic backhoe excavators and 220 tonne diesel haul trucks. Drilling and blasting will be conducted on 12 meter benches and mining on 4 to 4.5 meter fletches to minimize ore dilution. All mine planning is done to ensure flexibility for future anticipated uranium price increases. Radiometric scanners will determine the average grade of each truckload of ore, ensuring accurate separation of ore and waste. All trucks tip from both sides into a single gyratory primary crusher 
where after the crushed ore is transported via conveyor belt for a distance of two kilometers to the coarse ore stockpile. This arrangement enables the Western Waste Rock Dump to be located as close as possible to the pit and is one of the several design features that aim to minimize material movement costs. Considerable effort was devoted to the project design to ensure that the processing plant and waste rock dumps were placed in the optimum locations. The ore is then conveyed from the coarse ore stockpile to the secondary and tertiary crushing plant. The secondary and tertiary crushing plant produce a final crush product of less than 10 mm. The crushed ore is mixed with water, sulfuric acid and a binding agent in the two agglomerating drums which are approximately 4 meters in diameter and 12 meters in length. The agglomerated ore is then mechanically stacked on two adjacent 5 meter high 260 meter wide and 900 meter long leach pads before being reticulated with diluted sulfuric acid. The total leach cycle time is 52 days. Metallurgical testing and engineering studies undertaken over the last four years have identified the Atango mineralization to be most suitable for heap leaching. The host rock is free of clay and low in acid consuming carbonates and the mineralization leaches very rapidly with high recoveries at a relatively coarse crush size. The final stage in the heap leach process is for the leached material to be flushed and drained to remove any residual sulfuric acid and leached uranium. The residual leached material is then reclaimed using a bucket wheel excavator and conveyed to the heap leach residue pad and stacked using conventional mechanical spreading. The conveyor can be readily shifted, enabling material to be stacked at any position on the pad, negating the need for additional haul trucks. The heap leach residue material is free draining and is expected to have a low moisture content of less than 10%, thus negating any need for a tailings dam. The material is benign, coarse and will form a natural crust resulting in a low environmental impact. The heap leach residue material is stacked immediately adjacent to the southwestern waste rock dump and will be capped with waste rock material at the end of the mine life. On-off heap leaching is used extensively in the large copper mining operations in South America. The characteristics of the Atango ore and desert location make it an ideal candidate for this process. The uranium bearing leach solution is gravity fed to a temporary storage pond and then pumped to the extraction plant for purification and final recovery. This stage of the process involves conventional solvent extraction, precipitation and calcining technology. Firstly, the uranium bearing solution is clarified using a pin bed clarifier. The clarified solution then enters the Bateman pulse columns where the organic extractant and the aqueous uranium bearing solution are mixed together while flowing countercurrently in the column. This results in the transfer of uranium from the aqueous phase to the organic phase. Following which the uranium is stripped from the organic phase using ammonium hydroxide. 
The loaded strip liquor is pumped into a series of precipitation tanks where anhydrous ammonia is added to raise the pH. This results in the precipitation of ammonium diurinate. This slurry is then centrifuged to dewater the solids before being calcined to produce uranium oxide, also referred to as yellow cake. The yellow cake powder is then placed into 200 litre drums ready for transport in a sealed container by road to Walfish Bay. In summary, the processing plant design is conventional, simple and efficient, thereby facilitating ease of operation and maintenance. The plant will treat 20 million tonnes per annum at full capacity. Uranium oxide will be transported to Wallfish Bay by road and then shipped to converters in Europe and North America. The Atango project offers good potential for further resource extensions and new uranium discoveries. Additions to the mine life are likely to come from the main ore body, which shows the potential to continue both below and to the west of the planned pit. The Aina, Onjamba and Ompo deposits are also likely to extend beyond the existing defined boundaries. To the north, within the 500 square kilometres Itango license area, mineralisation has previously been intersected at the Rossingburg, Gohari and Ombuga prospects. Bannerman is proud to have a strong relationship with the community in Namibia. Our corporate social responsibility program is already making a difference and is recognised as being progressive, genuine and effective. The Bannerman team believes that actions speak louder than words and to that end individually participate in the various community initiatives we support. The globally significant scale and technical simplicity of the Atango Uranium Project, coupled with the existing infrastructure and long history of uranium mining in Namibia, presents a very real opportunity to create substantial value for all stakeholders.